Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Link Baptist Church. Guys, I want to thank you all for an excellent, outstanding, great Sunday school. That's what it's all about. It's about opening up, it's about talking, it's about learning, changing, repenting, believing, loving, all of the above. Just, just Sunday school was really good, and I want to commend you guys and encourage you to, again, take it to the next level. That's what we're doing. Take it to the next level. Let the world know that Jesus Christ is alive and well because he's alive and well inside of you. Before we get started, I have to make a, I would like to make a couple announcements. Uh, the first one is that um, starting the year, we want to do our, na our national missions. We want to do it, uh, we, we're making a donation towards feeding, uh, our, our national missions, feeding America. The state mission is feeding the children. So we want to feed America, we want to feed the children, we take up a donation for those because we're going to give a check to those today to fulfill our national and our international missions. And we're going to do with the rescue mission here. We've already given to the rescue mission once, but now we got our national, our international missions is feeding the children internationally and feeding America. This one in six people in America are food insecure. There are so many people who do not have enough to eat. And um, I saw on, on TV this week about an army uh, <clears throat> wife who had her kids in the car. And the guy was a, like, I don't know, his, his rank, but he was a non commissioned officer. But he only brought in $3,000 a month. Not that that's bad or good, but it's just, I'm just telling with the kids. And they were going to the food bank. And it let the country know that even our service people don't have enough to eat, guys. And don't assume that people do when, when, when the guys here go out to share food. It is such a huge blessing. They are want to expand the ministry to say, do you know anyone else, do you know, that they can go and bless with a box of food in the name of Jesus? They take time out of their schedule to go out and give it out. So when your donations of food, it goes a long way. But um, I have the, the paperwork up here about feeding the children and about feeding America. Feed, feeding the children, that, that's a big one. That's a real big one. And also feeding America. We just want to make donations there. And we're, again, as the body of Christ, being a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, again, if we are called to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of this world. We're, we're reaching all of, across the world with the word. Now we've got to put a little finances behind it. Just a donation from the church in the name of Jesus from this body of believers. And anyone who's listening, if you care to make a donation, just text us or inbox us because it's going towards Feed the Children, Feeding America. We do a local mission, a rescue mission. We took some coats out there. So guys, we're on board. We want to do everything the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Amen. We also pour into our daily bread because we use our daily bread. We do take up donations for those also. It's not time for that right now, but it will be a little later. So at the end of the day, Minister Bob, if you'll get a plate for me, he'll have the plate to just, if you can make a donation, you can't, don't worry about it, but we're just going to make a donation uh, to, and the ministry will pick up the rest of it. Next thing I want to make an announcement about is please go to our YouTube page and subscribe, and we know you're going to like it, so go on over there and touch it and say that you like it because you're going to like it. It's some good stuff on there. Uh, but we're building an online presence, and we know as with the church moving forward that we have to have an online presence. So go to the YouTube page. Tell us about it. Uh, go to the web page, the link, the link baptistchurch.net, one word. But go, and uh, we're updating our church directory, so everybody, please message or text us, and you can text the church phone for texting at 478 three nine zero zero five zero one that's four seven eight three nine zero zero five zero one we want to update you I'd like to have the storms out in Texas when our uh, bad weather so severe weather we'll post it on the website that we're canceling for tonight we don't always have to be in this building we desire to be but sometimes if the weather's not right we're just gonna pray and put a re recording on that from the previous week but we want to make sure safety's first especially with springtime coming up and storms and lightning. One thing that scared me is lightning. I don't play with lightning. 
Yeah, so, I, you know, we, we're not going to play with hurricanes and tornadoes and that kind of stuff. If it's in it, on the news, we're not doing it. We want to be safe and sorry. We trust Jesus. But he also gives us wisdom to make some good sense sometimes. Amen. So uh, we got a national mission. We got to tell everybody to love us and like us on YouTube. I challenge you, if you go there, you're going to like us. They need, we need to put a love button on that, a love and a like button. They're going to say, I love that one right there. Listen, let's go before the throne, all of us together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we take all of your plans and everything that you have uh, given to us, and we lay it before your feet, King Jesus. And we ask that you would bless it, that you would keep us, Lord. Uh, bless us to be a blessing to this world. Father, we pray for the lost and unsaved, for those who do not know you as Lord, nor know you as Savior. Lord, please give us a word to give to your people. Father, we pray right now you hide all of us behind your cross, that we admit that we are sinners, who are saved by your grace, and because of that, you call us saints. So now we acknowledge that we are saints who occasionally sin. And Lord, when we occasionally sin, please forgive us. Help us today with your word. Lord Jesus, we love you so much, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of John, chapter 12. John chapter 12, when you get it, John chapter 12, John is a, talks about the deity, about Christ being God's son, uh, the deity of Christ. Uh, the gospel writer talks about him being the son of man and the son of God and the servant. And Christ is all those things. But today, I, I pray we can see his wonder working power, his miracle Working power. Christ still in the miracle business, y'all. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Don't leave him out of whatever you're saying, whatever you're talking about, whatever you're doing. Don't leave him out. In John chapter 12, it starts off by saying in verse 37, who has believed our report? Who, who's believing what we're saying about God? Isaiah prophetically said, prophecy means that he said that the question of the day was going to be, Who's believed our report? Yeah. And the question of today, just like it was in Isaiah's day, who's believing what you're saying? Are you believing more what the world says or are you believe more what the Christ of the Bible says? But although, and I'm just going to read verse 37 through 41, but our text is only 42 and 43. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe him. Christ had fed people. He brought up water where there was no water. Have y'all seen that in Africa? Places without no water, he done brought water up. Come on, somebody. Jesus did this in front of people, and they still didn't believe him. Christ is in the mirror that I am alive and preaching it. Me? Preaching and teaching the gospel? You're talking about a miracle? You telling people about Jesus Christ, him alive in you? You're talking about a miracle? It's you. It's me. People believe the hype. Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. Jesus Christ inside of us. That's the hope of glory. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe him. That the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be filled to the full which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? Who believe what we're saying about your word? Are, are they believing the world more than the word? And to whom has the has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Well, he's been revealed to me, and I hope he's been revealed to you. Therefore, they could not, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, God has repeated himself again. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. God said, look, if you look with your eyes, you miss this thing. But if you look with his eyes, you get healed. If you want to be healed in the name of Jesus, this is how you get healed by believing in God's son. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and he spoke of him. How dare you see God's glory and you don't give God the praise. Come on, somebody. I asked God for a miracle. Then the Lord told me yesterday, J&J &J got another vaccine coming out. It's about to hit their books, too. 
God has overdone everything I ask him to do. Thank you, Lord. So you see me in church with my hands raised and my eyes closed. I'm saying, thank you, Lord. I asked you for a vaccine and you sent vaccines with an S on it. More than one. He promised a healing. That's what he just said, that he healed him. That's what, that's what the book says. Nevertheless, here, here. That's that fire on the inside. Sometimes it's just... <laughs> Nevertheless, even though, even among the rulers, the people who you knew, knew better, the people who you swore, who go to church every time the door is open, they know better. The rulers, men have believed in him, but because of an outside distracting force. What's the outside distracting force now? People don't think I'm anti-social media because I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I believe social media is the way we're going to reach the world in the future. I do. I just think there's more disinformation and misinformation than there is good godly information. And I think people believe the lie more than they believe the truth. That's why it's important for the, for the people of God to be points of light in social media, really. Because there's a lot of dark, there's more darkness than there is light. Nevertheless, even among them, the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they didn't confess him. How dare you go? I see people go on social media, they, they go into the grocery store, they found some collard greens, and they got some bananas. Hold up. You know, they riding in the car. Well, I got my feet out of one. I mean, I'm just, well, what is that all about? And, if, and, and social media was never designed for that right there. But I, I tell you this, take this one from me. More than likely, sooner or later, you're going to be paying for Facebook because it's going downhill. And Congress has got involved. And they told them, y'all got to clean up the trash out there, guys. Because a lot of misinformation, that's why they went and stormed the Capitol. Because misinformation, disinformation, and lies. That is shut down YouTube. Uh, uh, Facebook was the big one. That a lot of that stuff, the misinformation, America got attacked behind misinformation. And as I said earlier, so much of the Christian church went in the name of Jesus, and they have shanghaied and poisoned Jesus' name by going. And so many of my evangelical friends now are trying to clean up what they messed up because they believed in a doctrine. Of, of a certain party, ideology of a certain party, and not the ideology of the Bible. And so when you, I don't care what party you're part of, if it don't line, maybe you're just not a part of any, you, whatever party is talking righteousness, that's the one you vote with. If it's this part on the left, a part on the right, that's the one you go with. But don't just choose a party because they say, no, choose Christ. And these people, the Bible says that they wouldn't confess Christ. Wherever you go, if you're on social media, put Christ out there with you or take him where you go. You'll see just how much you're loved then. Watch how many people are turning you off because you're taking Jesus. Oh, we don't want to hear about that Jesus. Yeah, take him. Here we go. Nevertheless, even among the rules, men have believed in him, but because the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Whoa. Yeah, that's what happened, people. They get put out of their fellowship when they don't do the right. Now, this... This is God's book. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And I just told people to go to our YouTube page and like it. They love it, yeah. But see, that's what they want you to do. As long as you, they get a lot of likes, that's a lot of business. Everybody tell you to go to their page and like it. But people... Make sure that whatever we're liking is going to praise God. This thing today is about over your margin. It says moral cowardice of believers. Some people are uncomfortable with the truth when you tell them that. They're, and they'll get angry with you. But how dare you tell me the truth about what I'm doing and what I'm not doing? People get uncomfortable with you and what you're saying. And they'll cop a little attitude with you. And you'll know when you go around, they got a little old stinking attitude because of something you said about Christ and what they're doing wrong. People do not want to be corrected. But it's called moral cowardice in the Bible. Telling people right from wrong. 
Are we the people that God called us to do to stand up for the truth? Are we standing on the truth of God's word? The Bible said they love the praise of men more than the praise. They love, I mean, not, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Which is what Mr. Nico said in Sunday school. That, um, you know, he won't God to tell him, okay, I'll do it because you asked me. Because whoever asked me. Or do you feel like you need to be liked and loved on a certain social media more than the word of God? You, you know, I have a lot of my friends or who I thought were friends. They put check friends on my box anyway that they were my friend. They want to be my friend. When it came down to me talking about Jesus and right and wrong, they unfriended me. And I'm all right with that. And you got to be all right with it too. When they unfriend you or defriend you, what do you call it? Not defriend, unfriend. Huh? Unfriend. When they unfriend you, all right. Still telling the truth. Because did you have the moral turpitude in you to say, look, I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not. I'm coming with the truth. And I still love you and would love to be your friend. Moral cowardice of the rulers. The Bible says that they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And that's the thing that's stuck in my spirit. Fear and death and lies will always attack God's truth. Did y'all know that? Fear and death and lies has always, and doubt, that's the, the, the original sin was doubt. Did God really say is what the devil told Eve, told a woman? Did God really say? Creating doubt. Does the Bible really say? Yeah, this is what it says. And I'll show it to you if you got a minute. I'll show it to you in the scripture. So people, we got we have we've got to leave this moral cowardice behind us. It says walk in the light. You see that? It says walk in the light. Walk in the light and not in the darkness. When you go in the darkness, don't become a part of the darkness. Don't become a part of the darkness. Walk in in the light. Take the light. Be a beacon, a point of light in the darkness. That's enough darkness, believe you me. Yeah, that's enough. But God called us to walk in the light. And when you do, I promise you, you will be attacked. Today's sermon is, inside, is entitled Moral Cowardice, The Silent Believers. Now that's another oxymoron just like the Black Republican, but we're going to go into another thing about that one. <laughs> Moral coward, the silent believers, the failures, the flaws, the big gun in the end, it is your faith. What do you really believe? Because there are a lot of failures and flaws, and God loved us anyway in spite of that. Point number one, Miss Carlin. Ms. J, turn me on, brother. I didn't put my headset on. What you gonna do with the fire on the inside? I was so hot. I forgot to turn my microphone on. It happened. Point number one, ready, Carmen? Here we go. Failure and flaws. They failed to confess Christ. The life that you're living now, are you failing to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, regardless of what people are saying? Your failure, are you failing to talk to people that you love about the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, since the vaccines have come, and I, there are, listen, I say this because I, I, I have buried people with COVID-19. This past week, I lost two friends to COVID-19. The vaccine, it just works. It really does work. It has cut the death rate down. It has cut the hospitalization down. And it's not a cure-all. It's not a heal. It's not. But it keeps you from dying, from getting as sick as you possibly could get sick. You don't have to go to the hospital, and you don't have to die when you get it now. Because it's killing young folk, older folk. It's killing people. It does not, black folk, white, tall folk. It does not discriminate. It does not. Confess Christ 
before men. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, when you go to social media and you confess Christ, God said, him, I will confess to my father. When you go out there and you tell people about Jesus, God said, let me, I tell you what. So John says, you're taking me out there to them. Let me tell dad. He's taking them folk out there to me. He said, that's what I'm talking about. God is pleased when you do his bidding. In his name. God is pleased. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me, when you know the truth, and you won't stand on the truth of God's love, first of all, you don't love God like you're supposed to. And you don't love people like you're supposed to when, you're, when you know the truth and you don't tell them. When you know the truth, and it might offend your friend, but did you still tell them? Yeah, I'm here to fight against anti-vacciners. I am. I believe in it. And I want to encourage everybody else, it's saving life. If you ever have to bury somebody, it'll change your mind. Yes, sir. It will. When you got to commit their body to the ground and their soul, their spirit back to God, it'll change your mind. It doesn't take all that. It has killed 500,000 people. And by the middle of March, they said another 50,000 going to die. Is anybody fighting for those people who don't understand, who don't know? We've got to fight for them. Protect yourself. This virus is real. Put on your mask. Social distance. Get a vaccine. If you can get the shot, get it. I'm allergic to almost everything around. And I took, I said, God, if you do it, I do it. I got my shot. And the lady made me wait. And I got my, both my EpiPens in my hand. The nurse said, we got some too. I said, I got, I got my own. But they got some if I have a reaction. I tried to bet my soul on it. Because I asked God for it. I did. And he gave it to me. And I'm all right. Had no reaction, none whatsoever. And I, people, you know what? Out of, in America, 70 million people have got it. Nobody's died from an alert reaction. Nobody. So don't believe the lies that's out there. If you only get your news from social media, that's where you're missing out at. Yeah, that's where you're missing out at. If that's the only place you get news is on social media, that's, that's problem number one. This morning, Minister was talking about the morality of people. It, it's your call, it's our call to claim Christ or not. It's my call to tell people that every day last year, Two times a day, my wife and I prayed about the Lord helping us and blessing us with a vaccine. So when he did, were we surprised? No, sir, we were not. We did everything to stay safe until then. She got hers to protect me working at the hospital. I got mine because I love me. It's all about me. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. I'm just joking. Don't write me a letter. Listen. It's your claim to Christ or not. Please claim and accept Jesus Christ. The Bible states that there are blessings and there are curses before us, life and death. And it tells us to answer. The answer is choose life. That's what the Bible says. Choose life and choose blessings. Listen, they fail to confess Christ. They just wouldn't do it. These people in the Bible, in Jesus' time, they just wouldn't do it. They would not accept Jesus Christ. They just wouldn't do it. How many people today, we tell them about it, and they're just not going to do it? Everybody's grown here. Everybody get to make their decision. You don't have to. But if you know anybody who got super sick from COVID, or who died from it, that should be your lesson right there, people of God. And if you don't know anybody, in the database, there are 510,000 people today. That's, that's too much. A year ago today, state TV was saying that um, zero people had died. They were lying. State TV, Fox News was saying nobody had died. Sean Hannon said nobody had died. The president said nobody had died. A year later, 510,000 people have died. In, in 12 months, in 12 months. That's ridiculous. 
That, that, that's just ridiculous. That is a ridiculous number. All because we don't understand. And God said, my people perish. Hosea 4. 4. They perish because of a lack of knowledge. What does the Christ of the Bible say about the situation? He who dwells, Psalm 91, in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When God says you come high with him, and we hide with him and we pray, don't you expect God to hear your prayers? I mean, you belong to him, and he, you pray, and you ask God to protect you. And he, you know what? Some people, God might still allow to get that thing, Miss Clem, to send them to the hospital. I, 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 I don't, I, I don't want to be one of them, Lord. I just want you to, because I, I tell the world who you are and what you did. They wouldn't claim Christ. Let's go to, now, let's go to the next one, Carmen. The fact, first John. And this commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. When you believe in Jesus, <clears throat> moral cowardice, some people are not going to tell people the truth. They can talk to them about everything under the sun, but they don't want to tell them about the truth of God's word that Jesus saves. Yeah, Jesus saves. And that is not only just a rescue, that is salvation of your soul. That God takes you off the wrong path and puts you on the right path when you follow his son, Jesus. It says faith in John, when you when belief and trust and confidence, reliance, assure success, fundamental for duty. If, if you're going to be a Christian, you have to have a foundation based upon the lordship of Jesus Christ. It is defensive, escape, it's essential in prayer, and it's united with love. It's all about how you love God. And how you love people. People, we cannot be moral cowards. That we are afraid to tell people the truth in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Ron, that's what it's all about, dude. When they are afraid or ashamed. If you were ever my friend, you're going to be my friend after I tell you the truth. If you tell your friend, yesterday people were sitting on the rock. And when you sit on the rock, you make the back of your pants just straight dirty. It does. And um, I, I would tell people, go sit on the rock because I want the pants to get dirty. I did. I want to walk around with dirty pants. <laughs> but I was. I'm just telling you, I was because I wanted them to have dirty pants like they'd been to work. They went to work. Yeah, so now they, if, they, if they're doing anything in the field, they're doing anything to clean their pants off. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. Please forgive me, Lord. Y'all, please forgive me. Here we go. The problem here, John, was the secret. I mean, problem here, Ron, the secret discipleship. The people who were called themselves disciples, Nicodemus really was a believer in Christ. But he only went to visit him at night. You know how some Christians, you can only talk to them about Christ at church. You can't talk to them about Jesus anywhere else. Those secret disciples. His friend Joseph of Arimathea was the same. But somewhere in here, God called him out. Y'all need to make a move. And you know when they came out? The death of Jesus Christ. When he died. Joseph of Arimathea let him put him in his grave. And he went and got his friend Nicodemus. And they came out in public and they did the right thing. They wouldn't do it at first because of fear of losing some friends. Or a certain group that they ran with, they wouldn't do it. But when Christ died, both of them got up and they buried Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus wasn't in the tomb, but three days, he was gone. Joseph could get his tomb back after Christ left. What about you? Are you a secret disciple of Jesus? That you only come out at certain times? You're in the secret service for Jesus? Nobody really can tell that you are a Christian. Go ahead, Carmen Baker. The second one is fear and fallacy. And this is the big gun here. They feared men. They feared what people were going to say about them and what they were going to do about them. And the fear is really a fallacy. It's a lie. Fear is a liar. The fear and the fallacy is this. They fell because they feared loss. 
they were going to get kicked out of a certain club or the guys were not going to let them be one of the guys anymore. Or you couldn't belong to a certain club anymore, a certain entity that you belong to, that somewhere that you're going to get kicked out of it because now you have changed and you really do believe in God's son, Jesus. And the people you were running with didn't. See, the Pharisees were rulers and leaders. They had their own power. They didn't need this man called Jesus. But the Bible said they really did believe in it. They did. But they wanted to praise more of their contemporaries than they wanted the praise of God. And, and it's so prevalent in the world right now. The Bible, it is so common, so prevalent now that people want to have more likes and more good conversations than to just stand up for Jesus. See, I used to believe that, but I don't anymore. And tell them what you believe, and you become a witness. And you might get ridiculed, you might get ostracized, you might get excommunicated. They thought they were going to get put out of the synagogue if they said it out loud. They would lose their positions. They feared that they would be excommunicated, excommunicated, put out of synagogue. They feared they would lose their jobs and their titles and their position. Some of them mean their profession, their authority, their power that they had. That's what Ron was talking about in Sunday school. That's exactly what he's talking about. They felt like they were going to lose their power and their authority, their ranking among their group and among their peers because they're talking about this Jesus. They felt they would lose their recognition, their honor, and their security. Look at the puzzled look on that young lady's face. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, you ever been there? Well, you got a decision to make, and you know the spiritual thing to do, but you also know kind of what you want to do. I'm ready, not, not ready to give that up right now, Lord. I like my group, and I like my friends, but God says you like them more than you love me. Go ahead, Ms. Carmen. Matthew 25, 16, 25, 26 says, For whoever desires to save his life, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to lose it with redemption at Calvary. But whoever loses, who, no, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But you're going to go to redemption on the next one. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That's where you find it, at Calvary. For what profit, what do you gain? You might get a few more likes than I got or the next person got. But what profits a man that he gained his whole world and lose his soul? When he dies, he lose his soul. Your soul going to hell, but you got a lot of likes. Why People like you while you're here. And then two weeks after you're gone, everybody forgot about you. Think about it, people. God. Think about this thing. Is that real? Moral cowardice, moral cowardice. Are you in a position that you are really ready to tell people the truth regardless of how much you love them, they like you, don't like you, but you owe them, you owe no man nothing but the love. Tell them the truth. People, there is so much misinformation and disinformation, and so many countless lives have died because that man said that people don't need to wear masks. 500,000 people are dead. One of the worst mass murders in, a, in world history because you let that mess go. How many thousands of people needlessly died because they believed the lie? The people said they went and stormed the Capitol because they believed the lie. They did. QAnon, Oath Keepers, uh, Proud Boys, they said they don't believe it not because now they're on their own, they got real charges. They're going to a real jail. Yeah, they are. They're losing jobs. They're losing, they're losing all that stuff that they depended upon. Real estate agent in Texas, she flew up there with some of her friends. And then and when it went down, boy, down to it, her friends blamed her. She lost her job, and everybody lost their job. And now they got federal charges. And everybody won't apologize now. But there are still consequences, as we learn in Sunday school. There's still consequences for your actions. There are. Moral cowardice is somebody, what if somebody just told her the truth before they went up there and did that stuff, they would not have gone. How much stuff do people need to tell you so that you don't make the same mistake over and over? Colossians, <clears throat> let me read that. 
finish that. For what profit is to a man if he gains his whole world? Everything you want is where you get it and lose his own soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What, what will you give in exchange for your soul? A buy and a lie in exchange for your soul? Colossians 3 and 2, Paul letters to the church at Colossae says, set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. Yeah, get your priorities right. What's more important, looking good and feeling good and being good down here rather than setting your mind on the things that you will live eternity somewhere. Somewhere. That's a promise. If you want to live with the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to do it his way. You got to accept God's son, Jesus, and what he said. Second Timothy says, 2 and 12 says, if we endure, people got to endure during times of COVID. COVID was a sign of grace. COVID-19, horrible. Where sin did abound, grace did abound much more, according to Romans chapter 5. There's more grace than there is sin, guys. And there's enough sin around here to go around, but there's more grace. Those of us that are still alive, we know that, God, you allowed us to live through this COVID-19, and you're healing the land. You're healing your people slowly but surely. <clears throat> We're being healed. Are you being healed? If you're not, why not? If Christ, the songwriter said, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. If God's healing in this season, are you being healed? Are you being healed? Are you doing what God is doing through his son, Jesus. People, COVID is not a sign. It's not a sign. The last sign that we see, that we know of, was when Israel became a nation in 1948. That's it. But the last sign, Jesus said, was going to be the sign of Jonah. We're living the sign of Jonah, y'all. Yeah. We're being swallowed up and being spit out into some mist. Yeah, it's happening. We're living this thing right now. If we endure, we shall reign with him. When we go to heaven, we're going to be leaders with Christ. If we deny him, I don't know who said it. Jay said it. He said he promised you he's going to deny you too. Come on, Jesus. How, if you deny, the condition is if you deny him, he's got to deny you. Because you had a righteousness. You know these people who say, well, I ain't bothering anybody, and, and I want to do this right here. You have your own righteousness. God still said the only way to him is through his son, Jesus. I don't care how good you've been and how much money you've given, how nice you were. If you didn't accept God's son, you will not make it in. But when people have their own righteousness, where is God? God's been here all along. And the best thing about it, he... I bring him to the situation, and I'm a flawed human being, but I love Jesus. And, and when, when you tell him that you love Jesus and Jesus loves you and he loves them also, that's when you're cooking with hot grease. That's when it happens, when people hear of Jesus, when they see him, when they have an encounter with him. So when you see them on the judgment day, you know if nobody shared Jesus with them, you did. You know you did. And they go into hell, and, and it's not your fault because you did share Jesus with them. Failures and flaws. Don't deny them. Go ahead, Ms. Carmen. Now you got the failure, we got the fear, we got the flaws, we got the false friends. All those people that check your box said they want to, this girl told me she want to be her friend. She, she was sitting down, if y'all could have saw that girl had on. And I, I want to say, baby, I got a wife. But all she wanted to do was talk to me. The old me would have talked to her. But to marry me, you got nothing to pretend to talk with her. She can't be my friend. Because I got a wife that's my friend. And what she's offering is not on the menu with me. Failure. Fear, flaws, false friends. They fail because they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. They, lay, they love what men gave. You know, you don't see people outright prostituting themselves out there. But it's on the line. It's, it's close enough. You see a lot of young women who are not for sale but are for sale. And you probably have some men too. It is a dangerous world out there. 
You see the failures and flaws. You see the friends. But people, everybody who said they're your friend out there, they're not your friend. They gave social acceptance, which gave them esteem and favor. Oh, Carmen got it up there. There you go. There you go. And look at the man. That's how, that's how, that needs to be our logo right there. The man saying, like, what, 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 what? There you go. He said he got Pinterest, Yahoo. I don't know what eight mean, but, you know, is that a B or an eight? That, that thing right there. But here's there's so much out there that um, it will catch you, people, God. They had to have more likes or prestige, donor or image and glory. They had to have people willing to do something for them or have an image or glory. They would rather be accepted and approved by men more than by God. And people, that's the strong demon that captures the world right there. Businesses, everybody want to have more likes. That's just the nature of the beast. We live in this world, but our government that Isaiah promised us not in Isaiah 9, that he said our government was on Christ's shoulders. Now, we obey the laws here, but why are we so this party or that party when our government is on Christ's shoulders? How do we get Christ involved in this politics? No, that's the trick of the devil. Listen, stick with Jesus and you won't lose. Don't become sore of this party or that party that you miss Jesus. Because it's a trap. Let's go, Carmen Baker. John 5, 42 to 44 says, But I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. Christ tells him, I have come in my Father's name, and you don't receive me. How dare Jesus come, and they don't accept him that when we take Christ, they're not going to accept us either. So when you're trying to please people and you talk about Jesus, you're not going to please. Some folk are going to come to the light that's in you. Jesus says if another comes in his own name, that's what it is. That's, that's what's happening right now on social media. When people go out there in their own name, they'll receive that. But how dare you put Christ in the midst? And that's when you got to, people talk about God. But boy, when you bring Jesus in the midst, that's when you're going to find the separators right there. When you bring Christ into the mid middle of things, everybody's comfortable with God. But when you talk about Jesus, that's when the problem is going to come up. Be prepared to know it. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for the truth of Jesus Christ. The Jesus of the Bible. That is God's perfect treasure given to mankind. It is the word of God. If another comes in his own, when people go out there in their own name, the Bible told you already before social media came out, they'll receive them. How the, Christ says, how can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes only from God? You want the honor that comes with your likes but you don't want to honor that. Now, Christ said that 2,000 years before he told me to preach this. Because he knew that we were going to have a problem with this thing called, so it's idolatry at its finest. That's all it is. Because we want people to like us more than we want them to like the Christ who sent us. Now, Christ, that's Jesus, right? John recorded that at least 2,000 years ago. Do not seek the honor of social media. Jesus is the only way. Hell has many gates, and it's called the broad way. Though heaven has but one. I love that right there. I didn't see that one today when I looked at the note. That's it. Hell's got many gates. Heaven has but one. And that's God's son, Jesus. All roads don't lead to God, only Jesus. Do not seek the honor of social media. Jesus is the only way. Let's go, Carmen. Here's the solution. Faithfully fighting for the word of God. 
fearing God, not fearing man. That is the difference between fearing God. Solomon says fearing God is the beginning of knowledge and instruction and wisdom in Proverbs chapter 1. Fear God. That's reverence. Fighting faithfully. Fearing God. But by God, finish your course. Finish what he started. God will, he's honest, he's just, he'll complete this work in you. He will. But you need to get started. It's time to get started, church, during COVID-19. The Bible said now, N-O-W, now faith, right now, is a substantive thing hoped for and is evidence thing not seen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, and Hebrews 5 and 6 is going to tell Hebrews 11, 5 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible, you'll never please God. You can't please God on your own with your own righteousness. You've got to please him with what he says in his word. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The book of Proverbs, fight fear with faith. Whatever you're afraid of, ask some godly counsel to help you find it in the word of God. And stand on the word of God. Believe it. Fight for your families. Fight for your sons, your daughters, your mothers, your father, your great grands, your grands, your relatives, your friends. Be willing to not give up or quit on others. Fight for them. But that doesn't mean giving them what you want, that they want to have. Love them. But tell them about God is love and God is also holy. And you can't do what you want to do. Holiness means there are restraints. Holiness means that there are rules and there are boundaries. And you can't do it your way. It's called self-righteousness when you got to have it your way. And there's a place in America where you can have it your way. Yeah, Burger King. You can have it your way over there. But you can't go to McDonald's and have it Burger King's way. If you go to a McDonald's and ask for a grilled burger, they're probably going to look at you kind of because they're going to tell you there's a place that has the burger that you're looking for. And you can go over there. But I, I bet Burger King won't give you a slice of watermelon on your burger. So, you know, you can't have it all your way. <laughs> Faithfully fighting fear and finishing. Let's go, Carl. Faithfully fighting, fearing God, and finishing, finally. I fought the good fight. That this is the sermon of sermons when it comes to preaching an old school, old salted saint. I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. And I kept the faith. That's what Paul said. When it's time, can somebody say that about you? Is that your epitaph? Is that your sermon right there? That you fought the good fight. That you finished your race. But in the end, did you keep the faith? Are you fighting faithfully? Come on, people. God, are you fighting? Full of faith behind what God said. Have you finished your race? Are you in the race? Did you keep the faith? The Christian race is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Miss Keith, I just told you that yesterday. Listen, she sent me that scripture last night, Carmen. Uh, yeah, la just last night, and she used, to my, she used to run track, and the speed event, she could do that. But then the distance running, Hebrew, she used to my Hebrews 12, 21. Here's all I'm saying. God is just speaking so much to his people in the church. He is. And I hear you. And God hears you. And I'm saying, keep talking, keep asking, keep engaging. Let's keep doing it because God is speaking so loud. We've got to get on board with what he's saying. I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. This faith run sanctification, it is a marathon. You got to keep going. You can't quit. You can't give up. I know you get tired. You get weary. But keep going. Let's go, Carmen Baker. You got failures, you got flaws, you got fallacies, lies and untruths that are out there. Flaws are what's wrong with you, what's right with you. 
flaws or things that you just can't seem to get right. Failures, things you can't get right. Fear, fear is fallacies, and it makes you frantic. But I promise you that they're, they're going to faint, fade, they're going to faint, and they're going to fail because of faith. When you believe, at the cross, at the cross, when I first saw the light, the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. People, you got to believe in the Jesus of the Bible. Not the Jesus that people tell me, if you like God, pass it on to somebody else. Or if you like God, say amen. No, if I like God, I'm going to tell you about his son, Jesus. You don't just let people talk to you about God. So we're going to talk about God. I tell you, we'll talk about God. But the first thing I'll talk to you about is Jesus. I like your post about God if you like my post about Jesus. Yeah, we can talk then, but just talk about no, no, no. Family to the family of people, pe the, the family of people. Of God, I would encourage the family faithfully, full of faith. Fight, fear God, finish your course with force. Amen. Forcefully. Finally, when you do that, you'll find favor with Jesus. He will call you friend. Amen. It's kind of self-explanatory. Want to be God's friend? Yeah. Admit your failures, your flaws, your fears, your fallacies. Fallacy is a big one for the day. Fallacies and fears. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fallacies are the lies that's being told out there that people are buying into. And it causes fear and panic in you. And you become frantic about a lie. You, you're frantic about a lie because you don't know the truth. The truth is not hidden. You just got to open up the Bible. And those of us who teach it and live it and preach it admit when we're wrong. Let's go, Carmen Baker. Oh, there we go. We were kind of fast. <laughs> Today, I beg you, in the sweet and holy name of Jesus, meet us at the cross. Because we're going to trust God. When God said, this is my beloved son, when God called Jesus his beloved son, and he tells us to, that he's well pleased with him, he's just believing him. Well, God, we're going to trust you because you sent the son, and the son did it, and I, we know because some of us are his witnesses. That we trust God and that we follow his son, Jesus. People, there are a lot of fallacies out there. Don't believe the hype. There's a war today against science, against data, against uh, the truth. Everybody, if something, you know some politicians, if you call them on something, they say, oh, that's fake news. That ain't fake news. We just saw what you did. We saw you and we heard you. It's not fake. But people will stand in your face and tell you a lie and say, now you need to believe this lie. And you saw them do what they just did or what they just said. You saw it. But see, look, anything that's truthful and right, they're going to call it fake. That's why the church, the people of God, need to stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. This is the truth that we're standing on, that Jesus is God's son. That the only way to God it is through God's son, Jesus. That Jesus did die for, for your sin and for my sin. And because of that, we have peace with God. And we have re reconciliation with God. That we're all right with God and God is all right with us because of what he did. And because of that, Christ allowed his spirit to live in us. And we are commissioned and commanded to take his spirit every everywhere, including social media. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take Jesus wherever you go. God's raising up a new army. Can these dry bones live? Yes, sir. The missing link said, uh, I've got a few dry bones. That's becoming an army for God. Yeah, they're ready, they're ready to take this thing on. If you want to become a part of the missing link, email us, text us, call us, because we want to hold you accountable. We hold them highly accountable. We're not giving them anything. We hold them accountable. And once we mission them to the world, we're going to expect for them to go out and represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Work with me now. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you that we take all the fallacies of the world and all the fears 
that's in our heart and all the fear that's being perpetrated against us and against you. Lord, we see it, our failures and our flaws, that you love us in spite of it. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith. We believe just because we believe, Lord. We really do believe that Jesus died for us. Lord, we'll bet our souls on that. We believe that Jesus died once for all for us, Lord. And Lord, help us to be about your business, to work like that there is no tomorrow, Lord, to do your bidding for you, Lord. Help us to go into this world. Lord, we pray for our family and our friends who do not know you as Lord, nor know you as Savior. We pray for the lost, for the unsaved, that we can see them like you see them, the love on them, to share the goodness and the kindness and our testimonies of Jesus with them. Lord, we thank you so much for being our God, and we do bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. The church did say, Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise, God. We got 15 in here today, amen? Amen. Guys are saying that we're going to be socially distanced probably for the rest of the year. Whatever you say, Lord. We, want, we know people want to come back to church. We want y'all to come back. But guys, we, 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 we got to be safe. and We got to love each other to wear, you wear a mask, I wear a mask. And we'll protect each other. Stand up with us, please, please, and please. If you would, please. Find someone that you can point at and tell them this. Point to them. This is an, old, it's an occasion in the church when it's okay to point five fingers, all of them at them, and somebody else, ten fingers, and somebody else. Tell them this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number six, 24 through 26. Father Lord, in the sweet and holy name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. And we do pray we'd hide this word in our heart so that we might not sin against you because you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Thank you, King Jesus, for all that you do for us. Lord Jesus, bless us all as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for loving on us. Help us to hide this word in our, in our heart. Lord, we pray for the people who are listening that they got a word from you today. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed, people. God, thank you, thank you.